All right, welcome to the BAM School Podcast. I'm here today with my guest, Matt Todd, and he and I first met at a BAM conference in Philadelphia a few years ago, uh, reconnected uh, in 2019 in Silicon Valley, and he um, is a business owner that uh, 5X'd his business. He became an EOS implementer and now has other things on the horizon that we'll get to in a little bit. But Matt, thanks so much for being my guest today, and uh Go ahead and, and give us a one to two minute um, update on how you got to where you are now, your journey. Thank you, buddy. Uh, thrilled to be here. Uh, love to be part of the BAM space and uh, in any little part I can contribute. Um, how I got here, uh, like a lot of people, I went about my business uh, doing business and moved myself up through the ranks, uh, learned a lot about the HVAC industry, which is where I did my bulk of my business, became an engineer, professional engineer, and uh, worked my way through manufacturing and uh, distribution until I uh, got attracted to a contracting business and was uh, recruited and attracted to it as a potential owner. We grew that business from a small mom and pop uh, local uh, organization into a regional player and uh, found ourselves in a chaotic business moment, hitting the ceiling and all that good stuff with a bunch of people and really not knowing for sure where we were taking things. And that is what led me to the thing that we're going to talk a little bit about today, which is EOS, the Entrepreneurial Operating System. But I traveled the business route like a lot of guys in my time frame did. We just worked our way through the system and ended up getting to a place we wanted to be. And I found out as a business owner there's lots of things I liked about it, but there was a great deal that we didn't know how to do well and we needed to get better at. <laughs> yeah. It's funny when I said you, you 5X your business, <clears throat> it sounds great on the backside, but in the middle, uh, it looks a lot different <laughs> you, in the journey. Like you said, it was crazy, which... Um, Yes. led you down that we, road. We, so. we found out what the term hitting the ceiling was after we started EOS, but we hit it every time. And it was, there's just junctures. I, I was talking to a team this morning that's doing a startup and uh, they have been through the business cycle. And I talked about how when they hit 10, how suddenly you don't feel like you have control anymore. And they said, oh my gosh, that's exactly where we were. And I said, hey, I remember 10. I remember 25. I remember 35. Every one of those is a new place for the structure of your business and it creates unique challenges that you're really not informed about how to deal with because it's a process, right? I mean, as you grow, you bump into things that you didn't bump into the last time. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's real. It's real. Anybody that's been through it will tell you it's real. <laughs> right. So what are some of the principles that have guided you along the way in your business journey? Well, what's interesting is, um, uh, a lot of this stuff I, I know is part of me. In, in EOS, we talk a lot about core values. And um, all of us have core values, and they all are part of who we are. Some of us haven't articulated them, uh, but all of us live by them. And the ones that have yeah. really begun to resonate with me, frankly, after doing EOS for now, going on my sixth year, is our set of core values. And our core values are really simple. Uh, they're being humbly confident. It's the concept of grow or die, which I've always really felt like if you're green, you grow. If you're ripe, you rot. And so I believe in that uh, amazingly well. And then this idea of helping first is another core value. And it's we do so much where we give of ourselves, we give of our time, we give of our resources before we ever do a client engagement. And that part of me just feels right because that's how I used to do my business when I would do design work and when I would sell HVAC systems. And so it really fits. And then of course, do the right thing. Some people rephrase that as integrity, but I always like to say, do the right thing when nobody's looking. Or some people like to say, do the right thing if your mom were in the room. And the bottom yeah. line is you got to do the right thing every time, all the time. Yeah. And then another one that really resonates with me is the core value of do what you say. And I feel like that's one of the components that was deeply embedded into me, probably from my parents, that really served me well in business is not only doing what I said I would do, but when I said I would do it, or usually before. I taught my salespeople, you can not make anybody happy that if you promise them something in a week and you get it to them in four days, you have just yeah. beat the timer and you've accelerated yourself into their mindset in terms of what they do. And those things, buddy, have transformed into what we call the EOS life. And the EOS life 
just became very real to me in the last year and a half as I've kind of expanded my practice and touched a lot more businesses. This is what suddenly is resonating with me today as I as I look at my BAM life and I look yeah. at what I do uh, with my clients. It's and it's very simple. It's doing what you love with people you love, making a huge difference, getting compensated fairly, and having time for other passions. And I discovered about a year and a half ago that that wasn't for me as an EOS implementer. That was for my clients. That yeah. was for them to enjoy the fruits of what they were doing. When you build a business, many small business entrepreneurs get su sucked into the business 24 seven and they don't get to live those aspects of it. And yeah. I, I, as you probably have known, you probably heard a lot of business people reach those hitting the ceiling moments. And when they're really frustrated, they don't like their people anymore. They're not really in love with what they do, and they don't feel like they're making any difference. And it's like, yeah. wow, we have got to get that turned around because people need to have a purpose, and the purpose needs to resonate, and it needs to be fulfilling. And I can tell you that one of the things that's been my biggest joy in, in transitioning from being a business owner into being a solopreneur is the fulfillment I get out of seeing my teams know that they're making difference and getting their financials right so they're getting paid for what they do. And then when I can yeah. ultimately deliver them to have time for other passions so their relationship with their work life is healthy rather than consumed by work, that's when the magic happens. That's when people really come to work fresh. They're a better version of themselves and they're willing to give more back to the business the business really needs from them rather than just the angry, frustrated, tired guy. You know? Right. So. I've really, really been happy with what that does, and it's become way meaningful to me as I've started to feel that and see that in more of my clients. Yeah, I love it, and I love it that you make the values explicit and write them out, um, or you know that they're written out. Um, one of the things that I do whenever I recruit someone to work with me or students that I invite to my schools, I actually have a whole website with personality tests and my values, and I give them um, before I show them mine, I give them something that says, here's how you can walk through your own value discovery process. Because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I find so many times when there's conflicts within a team, um, it's not personality differences. It's not because this guy's an idiot or a jerk or you are or whatever. I mean, those things happen <laughs> sometimes. But most yes. of the time, it's yes. a value conflict. And, yes. you know, it is. Um, and someone can say, well, I value integrity, and that means I show up to a meeting two minutes early. And someone else goes, I value integrity, and that means I stopped and helped someone on the way because they needed something, so I'm sorry I'm two minutes late. Right. And it's like when right. you start to say – when you start to talk in terms of values and, you, and like your team has those – written out and explicit for them. It's just huge. So I'll actually post that huge. in the show notes that <laughs> your values and um, my little process for helping people discover those. So cool. Yeah. Well, the, the core values are a cornerstone of what we do with every team in EOS. And you're absolutely right. What There's an axiom out there that spends, says you'll spend 80% of your management time and energy working with people that do not align with your core values. And so wow. part of what we do for our teams is getting the people on the team that are share the same core values because yeah. it's not about being, as you just said, it's not that you're a jerk, it's not you're a bad guy, but if your core values don't match and they're not aligned with the organization, it's going to be a struggle for both sides. You're yeah. going to struggle, you're not going to thrive in that environment, and the organization is not going to thrive with you. And so we really like to kind of change the frame of reference rather than getting rid of people. It's like, look at we need to get the right people here that want to work together and be together. And that other yeah. person can find a place that probably is appropriate for them to operate in. It's just totally. not here. Right? right. And it's a very different. And, and, and we think of the meaning in terms of leaders actually parenting the organization. And we use that concept really, really intentionally to where would you let somebody act out in your family and create problems in your family if they weren't in alignment you would do something about that wouldn't you and of course they yeah. all yeah of course i would well it's like why would you let that happen here <laughs> right yeah. you're letting it happen right here within your own walls you know so yeah yeah that's great good good stuff um so is there a, a verse that kind of motivates you inspires you gets you up in the morning or guides you as you go along the day Yes, I, my, I have two of them, actually. The first one is James 3.1, and mm -hmm. 
And James 3.1 is my rallying cry because it was actually a conviction for me. And it's what drew me into seminary because I'd been teaching um, at, in my church for years and years and years and years. It was just something I really loved to do. And my kids said, Dad, you're a teacher. And I was actually teaching them in your high school class. If anybody's ever taught your own kids in the high school class at church, uh, you also have met your biggest critics, right? And so but they were just like, Dad, you're awesome. You ought to really think about teaching. And it's so funny because what we do in EOS is we are teachers, facilitators, and coaches. And so at least the teaching part, I never saw myself as a teacher. However, I love teaching. And, yeah. and so... When I was convicted that maybe my teaching wasn't up to par, James 3, 1 was that verse that said, you better go get your wheels on. You better go get the, you know, amperage that you need if you want to drive at the speed you want to drive. And so James 3, 1 is my calling card for that. And then my, my current calling card because of my entry into the BAM space is Joshua 1, 9. Uh, because BAM has taken me to places I never imagined I would ever go. Um, cultures and contexts I don't understand well. And that lack of familiarity requires a little bit of boldness. Uh, there's been many a time I boarded a flight and Satan is in my ear saying, you're not going to succeed. You're going to fail. They're not going to accept you there. And I've had some very interesting stories when I arrive in places that weren't really ready for me to be there for all sorts of different reasons. I'm, as I'm sure you have uh, visas, uh, entry points, um, working with uh, people that were less than uh, cooperative in, in helping you get what you want. And uh, the spirit is, is lifted and carried me through every one of those. Uh, when I look back on them, I just think they're amazing stories. However, uh, in the moment when you're threatened and you're kind of, you know, the M16s are coming out and the guys in the uniforms are kind of looking a little bit odd, uh, that uh, J Joshua 1.9 is a really powerful one to uh, remember why you're there and what you're doing there. Yeah, and could you quote Joshua one nine for us, or give us the be gist? strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The Joshua and the, and, the, and the people of Israel entering the land. Right. I mean, it was be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. The Lord is with yeah. you. <clears throat> yeah. So tell us, um, tell us a bit about your business journey, and um, and then walk us into how that led you into EOS. Yeah, so um, I, as I mentioned earlier, I started out working for a, a large global manufacturer, United Technologies Corporation, and they had a wing of the organization they just acquired called Carrier Corporation. Some people know about Carrier. It's an air conditioning yeah. business. Willis Carrier was a guy that invented it. So I worked from there and got amazing training. I went to their school in Syracuse, learned air conditioning, learned all the science, uh, learned how to do that, and then went to work in Los Angeles. Uh, working on large projects, uh, you know, large high-rise buildings and that kind of thing, applied systems. Then I moved to Dallas, Texas in a very, very active environment and then uh, had an opportunity to move home, uh, which is where my wife's home is actually in southwest Washington. And that drew me into the distribution side of the business. And for anybody that knows about the difference between manufacturing and distribution, it was a it was a hard lesson. It was it was it was a whole new set of challenges. Uh, representing a manufacturer and shipping things to your uh, places versus having to, you know, deal with warehousing and shipping and, and handling and warranties and different things. And so I learned that side of the business. And then what I really was drawn to was uh, going to work as a design build contracting company and just getting closer to the client, getting closer to applying what I'd learned. And over the course of my period, we ended up buying that business. And that's where we did uh, the, the, grow, the growth opportunity. We just said, we're going to take this thing to a different level. And that's what we did. And that's where my passion arrived. Like I was telling you, the utter chaos of having a 75-person organization uh, that kind of grew rather rapidly um, and having two offices instead of one and all the logistical issues involved with that. We were just in chaos. And we looked at each other one day, my partner, business partner, and I said, what are we doing? Are we just getting big to get big? Are we going to actually try to get our lives back? Because we just felt like our business was taking more than it was giving back. Yeah. And that's when we went to a peer group meeting. A lot of folks are involved in you know peer groups where you go and visit other businesses. And the peer group host in Minneapolis said, we're doing this EOS thing, and you guys all ought to take a look at it. In fact, they invited their implementer in to talk to our group. And my, my partner came back from that meeting and said, I don't know. We ought to look at this. They're really doing well with it. And I said, hey, we need to do something because I'm never going to get out if we don't. <laughs> and uh, we had a buy-sell agreement. And we both realized uh, it, at one of those Christmas, like, you know, sitting down and looking at your, your yourselves in the mirror and said, 
this is never going to happen. This buy-sell agreement will never happen if we don't do something different than what we're doing right now. Yeah. And so we were very compelled and interested in doing uh, something different. And EOS was the launch pad that got us into that. And EOS took us to a new level. And EOS uh, solved all the issues. And EOS uh, paved a runway for me to exit the business in a healthy fashion. So much so that that business is, did better last year in 2020 amid COVID than it had ever done previously. And I was not involved in any way, shape, or form with the business. And so I feel pretty good about that, that I left behind a working yeah. system, left behind a, uh, a group of people that were competent and capable, and replaced uh, my sales volume, which was over 40% of the business volume at that point in time. That's awesome. So, so two quick questions. Um, did you were you a 50/50 partner? Did you and was that Yes. When was, we started, we started as a 50/50 partnership, yes. And so yeah. when we were able to begin uh executing our exit strategy, I just sold percentages of my ownership to other uh rising owners and leaders that we had developed in the business to the point that cool. then in my last year of that transition, I sold my last shares to them and then I stayed on with the business. Uh for 2 years uh running a project that everybody involved my, uh, our team uh, the owner team and the representative team agreed it would be best if I stayed with the project, and it took two and a half years for me to complete that project. So, cool. Um, that's when I stopped doing it. Yeah. Well, that's that's great. One that that one you were able to exit because you had a a plan and system in place, and two that it was a smooth, you know, good transition. Um, all of those kind of things. That's great. Great to hear that story. Yes. Um, cool. So dive in a little bit about um, then as you jumped over to being an EOS implementer, what that journey's been like, and um, yeah, all, all of those. Absolutely, things. yeah. So so that us, us uh, going ahead and doing EOS with a, a with a really great implementer. That implementer became my mentor uh, because at that point I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the rest of my life, but I was pretty sure that. Um, I wanted to be out of my business at that point because it was the right thing to do. Because if I didn't get out, my partner never had any hope of getting out, right? I mean, there's exit strategies that need to work for everybody, and it's not just about you when you have a partner. Yeah. And so I just, we all agreed it was the right thing to do and, and transition to the rest of the team. And so EOS stands for the Entrepreneurial Operating System. It's about small, closely held businesses that need a system to operate in. Uh, what I like to say is the system we operated in before we did EOS was the Matt, Allen, and Dave system because it was just <laughs> us figuring stuff out, right? And yeah. every business has a system, whether it's clearly identified or not. EOS is simply a really const well-constructed, simple structure. And I even like to call it an ecosystem. It's an ecosystem to operate your business in where communication is elevated, uh, actual accountability is increased, and people know what's going on. And we have, say it a very simple way, uh, buddy, we call it, uh, you know where you're going, you know how you're going to get there, and you know who you're going to do it with. And yeah. answering those three questions well for not just the leadership but for the entire organization is critically important because important it gives us three things that we call vision, traction, and health. And by the vision part, we not only know those things, but we know well and, how, and have a shared experience in what we're going to do and getting to where we want to go with each other. Attraction is that concept of being disciplined and accountable while you execute on that vision that you've all agreed on makes sense. And healthy kind of goes back to that place I was talking about before, having time for other passions, but it's also just the cohesion, the unity, and the helping one another uh, do the work that needs to be done. Because any of us that have run a business know that once you have clients and once you have employees, you have plenty of issues that flow in the door every single day. You don't even need to go look for them. They're there. And you have to get those under control because the degree that you're able to manage and com compellingly solve your issues is the degree and the acceleration pace that you can take your business. Yeah. And EOS is designed to help you stay on track, keeping those issues under control, putting them where they belong, and getting really good at prioritizing because that's one of the things that's also challenging is picking the right thing to work on. And so it really tries to develop that skill set in your leadership team so then you can reflect that to the rest of the organization. Yeah, I think there is, um, I think it was Mike Malowitz that just wrote a book about that very thing of how do you decide what to work on next? You know, the, those issues mm -hmm. of, um, yeah. And I, I was introduced, I think, to systems maybe like in 2000, uh, way back with the E-Myth 
And um, mm, yep, I yep. used Michael to use Gerber's work is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I used to use systems way back in in my youth ministry days when I was working with junior hires and high schoolers, uh-huh. and yeah. I would have like you know this is how you lead a small group and um, here's w- worship set up and tear down and. Um, and we actually, we went home for a year in Japan after six years. And when I came back, I'm like, I don't need the systems as much anymore. I don't need these documents. Everyone kind of know. we all know how this operates. And after like a year, I was like, that was stupid. Like it just, it's, <laughs> it seemed like, it seemed like it was just going so smooth. We didn't need the documents and stuff anymore. We could just kind of do it. And then I was like, okay, we, we need to pull this back out because Things like running our cafe, you know, it, it was like there was a checklist still to do it or yes, this, yes. you know, and it was like, you know, even a ministry runs way better with systems and checklists and, um, and it's kind of crazy, but in, in a business, like, forget it. It's like two different businesses. If you have systems in place totally. And, totally. and if you don't, so what are some of the ways well, that you've seen, um, you know, that as you've been an EOS implementer, how has it changed your business owners' lives or the employees' lives or the business? Tell me about some of the results of it. Sure. And so kind of tying back to what we talked about earlier is is uh, me gaining some passion for wanting to get them, my, my yeah. clients, the EOS life, uh, yeah. those same principles. I think it's best to kind of hear it in their own uh, words and so I, I ask my clients uh, regularly how I'm doing, what I can do better, how I can give them more value. And here's what a couple of them said: uh, "You have helped build trust with our new leadership team. You have helped us get aligned." Which I just spoke about how important that is. You just spoke about how important that is. Like yeah. we make too many assumptions every day, especially when we're familiar with what we do. And those of us that have experience tend to forget that. We understand it well, but anybody that's new to it doesn't understand it at all. Yeah. And we just expect them to pick it up, and that's not real, and it's not fair. Yeah. Another client said, EOS has given our company a platform to address issues in a straightforward and collective way. You have been great in helping us set the system up and integrate it. Our company is stronger and more engaged than at any other time in the last 23 years. Wow. So that one resonates. That one's huge. That's what happened to us. We were a business that had been around since 1947, buddy. And there were a lot of things that were done okay, but yeah. there weren't that many things that were done extraordinary. And by us getting EOS under our belt, we were not only able to capitalize on the things that we did really well, we were able to fix the stuff that we weren't that good at. Yeah. And then here's another client that said, oh, wow, where do I start? We have a vision. <laughs> we have goals. We are continuing to grow every day. It's nice to be created and a leadership team versus the weight on our owner's shoulders alone. Yes, yeah. tremendous value. We now have accountability, it says with an exclamation point. <laughs> so those are those are people that got value. And then I have a couple other people here that just, just this is what resonated with them, especially in this past year. 2020, for all of us, was an interesting year, to say the least. And what's yeah. interesting, and I've, I've shared this with uh, almost all of my EOS counterparts, there's over 317 uh, professional EOS implementers that are part of the EOS community. And we meet every quarterly. We do exactly what we tell our clients to do. And at the most recent annual meeting, one of the things that was really interesting is over 95%, in fact, I think it was 96.7 or some number like that, of the clients within the EOS community that were served by EOS professional implementers actually grew their businesses either by dollar volume or by gross margin improvements in 2020. Now, if you wow. don't think that's impressive, wow. you just think about the nature of what happened to everybody this last year. And so yeah. this is what a couple of my people said. We are 100% at committed to the EOS process and are a stronger company for the year we have spent in your loving care. And then the (laughs) next one, here's my last one, uh, buddy. Your help has improved us the way we now run our business. These practices also apply in our personal lives. I believe we now have more respect for the people we work with as well as gaining their respect. Everyone here now knows that they have a voice that will be heard and that the managers are listening we now know the importance of being accountable to one another. So I just wanted to share a yeah. few of those tidbits. I have a whole page of them, but those are the ones that were most salient in terms of 
the question of what this this last year, what is the businesses and they've gained from uh, doing EOS. So that kind of gives you some insight into how they feel about it. Yeah, I was doing some research when COVID first hit, um, specifically for construction companies and engineering firms. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in the downturn in 2008, 2009, 2010, and on the Inc. 5000, um, I think two thirds of those companies dropped off the Inc. 5000 list or went out of business. Um, but all the ones that stayed, they ended up growing in size. Like they picked up the other business. They, you know, mm -hmm. they had the systems yep. in place. They had the marketing. They had whatever. They helped them to get through it. And so for them, it actually turned into a good thing. Um, and, you know, these kind of times, if you have a business that's set up for it, um, it's you're going to be stronger on the backside. Well, and one of the really, really important things that we try to ingrain, like really instill it in our leadership teams is you've got to stay on track. You've got to keep your pulse up. And, you know, God designed us to be 90-day animals. He kind of gave us a 90-day attention span. He created seasons of the year. He created circadian rhythms. He, he created the rhythm of the universe that we embrace. And I've just seen it in real time. And when, when uh, COVID hit, there's a lot of people that wanted to pump the brakes. There's a lot of people that want to kind of fall out of alignment. They wanted to kind of, they weren't want, sure they wanted to keep going. They weren't sure what to do. And I said, look, guys, I don't care whether you pay me or not. We're going to stay on track. We're going to keep the rhythm going. And the people that did that, and they did it early in EOS, rebounded so rapidly and excelled and thrived. The people that held off and pumped the brakes and kind of waited to see what was going to happen, they had a much, much harder time getting their, their pins back underneath them. It was really challenging. And yeah. so one of the things that EOS delivered to the teams that were really bought in is was keeping on rhythm, continuing meeting. Keep your weekly meetings yeah. going, baby. There's no better time right now to talk about issues than when we have them coming in the door like they are. So um, for yeah. those of us that remember March, April, and May, where the rules were literally changing daily, what a great way to navigate that where you're getting together, you're meeting, and you're, and you're coming up with solutions every single week. Yeah. So it was powerful, and the teams that really leaned into it thrived as a result of it. Yeah. I always think when I'm watching sports I, and I see a coach – like, a, oh, we're, we're going to play defensive, like a basketball, you know. When I was in college, mm. one of the years, my um, I didn't play basketball, but I'm watching the team, and we're up by, like, 20 points with, like, four minutes to go in the game. And I see the, um, the coach just starts playing defense, telling them to hold the ball. And we've been pressing and pressing, and it was a fast-paced game. Yeah. We're yeah. up by 20, and all of a sudden, they just had a couple shooters hitting threes, getting hot. We ended up losing the game. And everyone is just like stunned. But ever since then, I've been like, I, I, I like never want to like let off the gas ever, which maybe isn't the right philosophy in sports. Well, we've, all, we've all heard that thing, right? In, in the NFL yeah. or in college where they say, we're going to go into the prevent and defense. And it's like the guy yeah. will say, yeah, prevent. It'll prevent you from winning, you know? Yeah. It's that, it's that <laughs> it's changing, so changing what you do well and not doing what you've been doing that got you where you are. Yeah. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> yeah. Don't don't mess with the system and, and what's, That's what's right, working. That's right, man. Don't mess with the system. So when when a business starts to implement EOS, when how soon would you say they start to see changes? Whether it's um, you know I think and what order? Like, do you feel like they get <clears throat> peace in their life and then profits come up, or when do you see the change? And what is it? Is there a typical uh, result for a company? What what are you seeing? Yeah. So for the most part, uh, in my experience with the businesses I've worked with. Um, we, we do a thing right out of the gate. We call it focus day. And, and from that focus day is when we kind of launch them on their EOS journey. And I, we generally try to come back 30 to 40 days later and gather that up and review it and assess it. And in between, we've talked to them a couple of times and we're kind of coaching them. Uh, however, when we come back to that second meeting, uh, a lot of teams are still kind of in disarray because a lot of what we just taught them is new. We're trying to reconfigure their business. We're trying to get it aligned. We're trying to build a new accountability chart. It's by the third meeting, they all come into that meeting kind of going, you know what? I can tell you something's already better because we've been talking more and we've been getting together and meeting more and we're actually doing something about it. Because a, a lot of people meet 
but they don't do anything with it, right? There's tons of meetings that nobody should ever even have. One of the things we try to do early is get them using our regularly uh, scheduled meeting on a weekly basis to actually accomplish something and get them to see meetings as a different thing with a different purpose and kind of holding them in a different place. So Gino Wickman, the author of Traction, likes to say, traction first, vision second. So we literally put them out there on the road in their car, wobbly wheels or not, and get them driving. So when they come back for that second meeting, they have all sorts of really, really good questions that are important to them that we start solving with them. So by the third meeting, when we cast the vision for the business and we kind of set the plan for the coming year, they're already getting benefit, and most of them are very enthused, so that when they come back for the first quarter, by and large, most teams are beginning to see results. And so depending upon where in their fiscal year and where in their calendar year we start the process, I can say without question that within the first year, all the teams that I've continued to work with, all of them have gotten something out of it, and they've seen the results. Some of them see it as early as the first quarter. Cool. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, I because, th- you know, it's like uh, often people will say whether it's counseling or whatever in life, often things get worse before they get better. Um Right. I don't know that things necessarily get worse, but it it does it's a change and people don't like it's change, change at first right. even if it's going to yeah, even if it's going to make things And so we we accelerate um, that learning better. process because adult learning as you know is very different than what we do as adolescents and children. And so adult learning we we accelerate that front end and we fail fast and we fail f- furiously so that people are really interested and engaged to do something about it. It's an elegant design. The process really works. I humble myself to it all the time. And seeing people go through that and then come into that quarterly pulsing, that 90-day pulsing, where they really start feeling like they're getting some traction, they're getting some control on what they didn't have control of before. If you get them to even see the light, then they're interested in doing more with it, right? And so I think it's a powerful way of showing them, even though they're failing, even though they're failing furiously, the pace at which you do it keeps them, like, uh, really rolling, keeps them going. Yeah. So I know you've worked with one of our friends in common, Ryan Crozier in Romania. Um, We have a friend, Matt, who works in South Asia that you've worked with. Um, how many clients are you working with right now? So how many how many businesses can do you help in you know at any one given yeah, time? Yeah, so I, I I consider both uh, uh, Ryan and Matt uh, BAM. You know they're in my BAM space. Yeah. And what I like to tell all of my EOS clients, the ones that actually pay me for what I do, I say, look, it, I need to do it, do enough of this EOS work that you can feed my BAM habit because BAM has become my passion. <laughs> it's become my place that I like to go. And so my clients, about uh, a little over half of my clients are believers. Uh, most of them we pray before we meet together in our sessions and they pray for their weekly meetings. And so I'm getting a massive fulfillment factor out of working with those people because I get an A plus for my EOS life stuff yeah. um, because these guys help turn the dial on that and they really set me up to chase this passion that I was introduced by my son. Uh, yeah. Shortly after I left my, my business, he, he, ca- he called me up and said, Dad, I talked to this guy in Indianapolis at a meeting I went to. I think you ought to meet me in Dallas, and we ought to go to this BAM conference. I didn't even know what BAM was. I didn't even, had never heard of it before, right? Yeah. So I said, sure, why not? Let's do it. And that's when I became uh, uh, enriched and began to understand. I, I heard Bill Job speak, and... And he just like lit my fuse, man. That yeah. guy just turned me on. And so I, I, I then, of course, as you know, met you in Philadelphia and then in San Jose when we were still getting together live for those things because I just got so infatuated with it because it just resonated so deeply with me that this is what work is supposed to be like. This is how we're supposed to do work. And, and of course, um, some of the speakers that came on were telling me how we could actually do that in America. Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of... Uh, in my mind, um, a vainglory in the fact that we do so much work overseas when there's a ton of ministry that can be done through business right here in our own backyard. Yeah, um, That's kind of my long-reaching dream is to maybe kind of convert that and turn that around. But in the midst of that, I've, I work with a, I've worked with a water business in Ghana, a water bottling business. 
Uh, we have an orchard in the southern highlands of Ethiopia that is an incredibly interesting project. I've been able to get there a couple of times. In fact, we were just returning from there uh, when uh, on March 16th of 2020, and we were uncertain whether we would get back home or not because when our plane left Dubai, we didn't know if the San Francisco airport would even be open when we got there. Um, but that's the last trip I took. Uh, in the midst of that, though, we've been communicating. The teams are still working hard, obviously. And as a result of this, um, my son and daughter-in-law have started a BAM business in uh, northern Africa. Cool. And so uh, we've been using EOS to get them st uh, to be the beginning part of that, to get them a VTO that makes sense, to get them their heads wrapped around it. And I had the glory of uh, listening to my son do a presentation in front of a group of BAM mentors. And... I was impressed. I, he was he did so well with it beyond what I already knew about the business that I couldn't even believe it. It was fantastic, and they've been able to monetize that business. Uh, they had their first contract, and they are entertaining uh, several new contracts at this point in time. So I'm more than just excited about them doing that and, and reaching that community where they live. And then um, we've started a BAM business right here at home. We're going to do oh, wow. a BAM business with my daughter and her husband uh, doing a uh, – a product that's going to be for uh, uh, comfort and chaos is what we call it, but it's a little provision uh, backpack that's a teddy bear. Cool. And so uh, we're working on that right now, and we want to make it a BAM enterprise. We want to service the first responder community with gifted bears, and we want to have our employees understand extremely well what BAM really looks like. That's really cool. <clears throat> I didn't realize yeah. um, some of those different areas that you'd gotten involved in, so... Yeah. yeah, I got into it big. Uh, my son <laughs> pulled me in and I just I've never gotten back out. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, um, I, I uh, let me see. I was trying to think if I want to go uh, further. We're at like 36 minutes. So I'll cut this out. Um, yeah, I think what I, I think I'll come back and just end it at this point because we're uh it's slowly uploading on your side. I can see that. So I just want to make sure we can get it all done. So let me, uh, let me come back. Well, thanks Matt so much. It's been really fun to, um, yeah, just hear about what you're doing. Um, hear what you're doing in the business's mission space, learn about EOS. If someone wanted to contact you and find out more about EOS or having you, um, help them as an EOS implementer and coach, where could they find out more about you and contact you? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Well, I will link to both of those in the show notes. And uh, thanks so much for being a guest. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to click, uh, I 